How many of you all have ever realized that when you give and give and give and give and give and give, that you often start to run into a sense of exhaustion? Sometimes you need to figure out how to say no. Whew. West Philadelphia, born and raised. On the playground, I spent most of my days getting one little fight. My mom got scared and you know the rest, right? So Will Smith went to Overbrook High School in West Philadelphia. And he was not the only person from Overbrook that has gone on to be tremendously successful. We've got Guillaume Bulford Jr., who was the first African American in outer space. We have John Drummond, an Olympic gold medalist. In fact, Overbrook is one of six schools in the country who has had more than 10 of its students become NBA players. One of six. And that includes Wilt Chamberlain, right? So, like, you would think looking at these stats that Overbook in his amazing high school. And uh, in reality, it's been named persistently dangerous, one of only 20 schools to receive that honor across the U.S. It has less than 60% of its class that graduates year to year. In fact, out of 1,200 students in the school, more than 500 get suspended each year. So how in the world do we have super successful students and then other students that can't seem to catch a break? Well, bring in the TFA. That's the Teachers for America. The Teachers for America is an organization that wants to balance the scales of social justice and get into those types of schools and give every student a fighting chance to succeed. And Give or Take, in chapter six, goes on to talk about one teacher who went in and after working hours and hours and hours and hours, just so exhausted that she can't seem to, to figure out what she needs to do to make a difference, frustrated and complaining and, and reaching, you know it, reaching burnout, right? Where, where in school, out of school, demoralized, tired, like, can't seem to do it. In fact, the TFA is famous, unfortunately, for bringing a lot of givers into their organization who just want to make those places better. And yet, after their two-year contract, about 50% of them don't even renew. They, they, they don't go on to teach in tougher schools. In fact, after three years, 80% of those teachers don't stay in those tougher schools. In fact, 33% of all the teachers from the TFA end up leaving teaching entirely. Entirely. We have a few things to look at when we're considering this, right? We've got concern for others' interests, and we have our concern for self-interests. And so as we're looking at givers that are successful versus givers that are not, the book starts to draw some very interesting conclusions and some interesting correlations between the two sets. So we can understand that somebody that has low concern for others and low concern for themselves is really just apathetic. Right? <laughs> kind of blah. <laughs> they don't really care about them or anybody else. They don't really do much. We know that somebody that has a lot of concern for others and low concern for themselves, well, those are selfless, self-sacrificing givers. And it seems that most of the TFA is full of these types of givers. Teachers that really want to give to others, and yet, because of that giving to others, ends up being really burnt out. So the chapter also looks at some salespeople uh, in a charity organization. And those salespeople in the charity organization, the salespeople that have a lot of self-interest in themselves, but don't really actually seem to care too much about others, we're actually being more successful in that space. What do you mean, Jeff? Like, they're in a charity organization. Like, they're helping people do better in life. And like, why wouldn't the givers succeed in that environment? You said in the very beginning of the book that givers often succeed even in sales roles. And that's correct. So, but what we're finding out is that the takers, because of the money and the monetary gain, were really good at the sales and successful in this aspect, while 
the selfless, self-sacrificing givers that were in there just for the common good, they weren't doing so hot. What we go on to find out is that when a selfless, self-sacrificing giver also has concern for themselves, what James Grant ends up calling, or Adam Grant ends up calling a other-ish, that's when they become successful givers, when they become other-ish. What does that mean? Well, it means that they do have a lot of concern for others and they do care about others and they want to give all to their others, but they also realize that in order to give all to their others, they also want to give to themselves. They want to give to both. They have self-respect, self-care. They want to give to self and giving to self uplifts them. Well, that's pretty interesting. So what does that mean? How does that look? Well, when a giver can see and perceive the reward that is being felt by giving to others, then that perception goes on to help make them energized and successful. So the teachers in this particular instance, a lot of time teaching, the rewards are years down the road. And so they're getting burned out. They're helping students, but getting burned out because they don't see those rewards until years later. So this particular teacher, Conroy, in the book, she goes on to uh, actually uh, start volunteering and giving more outside of school. But because of that one-on-one -on -one work, she's able to make a difference, see the difference and become energized and thereby goes on to give more and more and more. In fact, that's one of the super interesting correlations in the book is that there are people that give that give in chunks and people that give that give in sprinkles. We've learned from the one thing. In fact, I had a couple of uh, clients this week who I had to have conversations with about this. And we've learned from the one thing that you need to be time blocked in order to be the most effective. Being distracted causes your attention to vary between a lot of different areas. And that distraction can cause you to fail. That multitasking is a myth. And it appears it is that way with giving as well. When you sprinkle your giving, you end up not reaping as many rewards because it kind of ends up being habitual. You don't get the culmination of the effect all in that one day. When you give and give and give and see the reward and see the reward and see the reward, you end up having a, a compound effect on top of the giving. When you sprinkle it across multiple days, you don't get that compact of, compound effect. It's like a little shot of adrenaline but not enough to really keep you excited and motivated. In other words, time block your giving. Successful givers time block their giving. They take time to themselves. They take time to bunker down. They take time to make sure they are getting their work done. And then when they are emotionally ready and able to help others, they take that time to give and seek the reward. So in this teacher scenario, she didn't, she didn't volunteer Monday through Friday when she was exhausted from school and from work. She gave on the weekend when she was recharged and able to take that energy and then use that energy to push herself through the next week and into the next weekend. Successful givers practice giving of themselves and giving to themselves. Things to think about. Thanks, everybody.